Wonderful. Well, uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, I think that we have uh, critical mass now. Um, thank you for joining us uh, again uh, for our Mass CEC's Triple Decker Design Challenge webinar. Uh, again, my name is Galen Nelson. I'm the Chief Program Officer at the Mass Clean Energy Center. It's good to see uh, so many familiar names and organizations uh, that have uh, decided to join us this morning. Uh, so we look forward to highlighting some of the key components of Mass CEC's Triple Decker Design Challenge. This, this morning, I'm joined by uh, my wonderful colleagues, uh, Jacqueline, Bev, and Peter. Uh, I'm going to lead us off, cover our agenda uh, for the webinar, and talk briefly about why we're focusing uh, our resources on uh, existing buildings and triple deckers uh, in particular. And then I'm gonna turn it over to Jacqueline and Bev, um, who will walk through the design competition details, including our selection criteria, uh, application materials, the Slack channel that we have established to facilitate team formation, uh, available prizes in the competition and more. Uh, I'd like to take a moment to acknowledge the Bar Foundation support uh, for our Triple Decker Design Challenge. Uh, before we start a few um, housekeeping items, I realize that um, most of you at this point have participated in virtual meetings, uh, but as a reminder, please do uh, mute yourself if you have not already done so. Uh, please feel free to submit questions uh, as they arise uh, in the questions box uh, on the right-hand side of your screen, as opposed to the chat box. We'd prefer that you use the question box. We'll uh, do our best to answer as many of those questions um, as we can during the webinar. Uh, we'd prefer that those questions be submitted in writing, uh, both so that we have a written record, um, but also due to the kind of logistical challenges of um, engaging a lot of folks um, on a webinar and muting and unmuting and so on. Uh, but uh, that said, if there's a need to clarify a question or your question uh, includes uh, a lot of necessary context or detail, then certainly feel free to, to un unmute yourself and, uh, and jump right in. Uh, this webinar is being recorded this morning. Uh, we will post questions posed during the webinar and related answers. Um, uh, again, many of those um, will post immediately, uh, but we will post uh, questions that we're unable to answer today uh, uh, and related answers before September 1st on Mass CEC's uh, Triple Decker Design Challenge page. So looking at our agenda for this morning, uh, as I noted, I'm going to speak briefly about the scope of the Building Sector Decarbonization Challenge in Massachusetts, particularly uh, existing buildings, and a bit about why we are focused first on um, triple deckers. Jacqueline will take over and describe the two tracks in the Design Challenge, the retrofit and three plus, uh, as well as our competition selection criteria and uh, prize levels and descriptions. Then Bev will walk us through the competition application materials, our Slack channel, and our plans to recognize and celebrate uh, competition uh, winners. And again, along the way, we'll do our best to answer your questions uh, that you pose uh, in writing in the questions box uh, on the right-hand side of your screen. So uh, the purpose um, of the Triple Decker Design Challenge is to engage our region's considerable design and high performance building talent to identify replicable, scalable, all electric approaches to retrofitting uh, existing triple deckers um, and our region's iconic three family dwelling. Uh, competitive applications will also consider uh, the embodied uh, carbon of proposed uh, building materials, including insulation. Uh, competition applicants can choose from one or both uh, design challenge tracks, our straight up retrofit track focused on retrofitting uh, a triple decker's existing three units or the three plus track as we're calling it, which invites applicants to propose an additional unit to an existing triple decker while upgrading uh, the entire building. And again, Jacqueline and Bev will provide further details as we uh, walk through the webinar. Next slide, please. So the design challenges, uh, design challenges in general, uh, typically focus, as many of you know, on uh, new construction. So why have we chosen to focus instead on triple deckers, an existing building typology built uh, 100 to 130 years ago? 
Well, the built environment, um, as many of you know, may be the toughest sector to decarbonize um, here in Massachusetts as we move toward uh, net zero emissions by uh, 2050. And within the built environment, uh, upgrading and updating uh, existing buildings such that they meet um, 2050 climate goals while also providing building occupants with a healthy, positive experience is perhaps our greatest um, decarbonization challenge as it will involve millions of buildings, as many transactions, and in many cases, complete replacement of core heating and cooling equipment, um, and for many, many, many buildings, uh, existing envelope uh, improvements. So while retrofitting our existing building stock is likely our greatest um, decarbonization challenge uh, here in Massachusetts, it, it may also be one of our greatest uh, economic development opportunities. Um, unfortunately, as many of you know, the path to decarbonizing our existing building stock is littered with a wide variety of um, market transformation barriers, which I won't detail here in the interest of time, uh, but um, it's worth noting that, that technical retrofit challenges no longer top that list. Of course, they remain significant, um, but instead, what is lacking um, in the market are replicable, scalable retrofit approaches, including compelling decarbonization finance options for building owner occupants and owner investors. So it's our hope and intent that this design challenge will leverage the triple decker's popularity, its versatility, uh, its um, historic significance, its brand, um, to identify and really highlight and celebrate compelling retrofit approaches for triple-deckers, but it also may help inform um, future existing building projects that Mass CEC uh, may undertake. And so I'll close here with um, two quick notes before I turn it over to Jacqueline and perhaps stealing a bit of thunder from, uh, from Bev, uh, which is to say that uh, first and foremost, we really want to rec recognize and celebrate um, your design submissions uh, in a public event, virtual or live. Of course, that's TBD, depending on um, uh, the status of the pandemic at that point. Uh, but sometime later this year, um, you can be part of the state and the region's um, solution to decarbonizing our existing building stock. Uh, we want to celebrate that. We want to recognize your achievement. Um, and we want to inspire others, um, builders, building owners, um, Re energy um, regulators, public officials, elected leaders, community leaders, and more. So we look forward to your um, submissions. And second, um, you know, we want to move beyond just a design competition. There will certainly be some value in in highlighting um, uh, really smart, compelling um, 2050 ready uh, retrofit approaches, if you will. Uh, but we intend to identify resources to actually fund a handful of triple decker retrofit projects. Um, based on your design submission. So while this is a design competition, uh, winning submissions uh, may also serve as a blueprint uh, for actual building electrification and decarbonization work. Um, so hopefully I've uh, at least somewhat excited your, your interest uh, in, in this design competition. Uh, and with that, I'm happy to turn it over to Jacqueline who will walk us through the design challenge details. Thanks. Thanks, Galen. Um, so hi, everyone. I'm Jacqueline Guile. I work on the buildings team at Mass CEC. So first, I'm going to go through the two um, tracks for the design competition, and then also the baseline triple deckers that applicants can use to base their design on. As a reminder, all of this information is also um, in our invitation for proposals on the Mass CEC website. So applicants will apply to one of two tracks. The first is the triple decker retrofit design. In this track, applicants will design a deep energy retrofit while using the existing layout of a triple decker. The second track is the three plus retrofit design. In this track, applicants will design a deep energy retrofit while also adding an additional unit to the building. This additional space can be on the fourth floor or it can be added to the back or the side of the building. Through the challenge, applicants have three baseline triple decker buildings that they can base their design on. The first two buildings, example building A and B, are fictionalized triple deckers located in Somerville and Chelsea. 
these two buildings have features that are typical of triple deckers in the area, and Mass CEC has provided assessments of the buildings that shows the quality of the building envelope and the existing mechanical equipment. The assessment information for buildings A and B can be found in Appendix A of the invitation for proposals. Applicants can also opt to design around their own triple decker instead of one of the two assessed buildings. For applicants that do this, they would apply through the Bring Your Own Building track, and they must submit similar data that Mass CEC will be providing with the assessments. Once applicants apply in November, Mass CEC, working with an external selection committee, will evaluate and select winning submissions for the best retrofit designs. Mass CEC will be awarding $150,000 in prizes. There will be three $25,000 prizes for the winning submissions in the triple decker retrofit design, the three plus retrofit design, and the bring your own building category. There will also be four $15,000 runner up prizes. These prizes can be any of the three categories and this will depend on the quality and number of applications we receive in each category. A $10,000 People's Choice Award will also be selected. Mass EZ will circulate poster designs and the public will vote on their favorite design. An applicant can receive the People's Choice Award in addition to another prize in a different category. Lastly, we will also be awarding a student prize for any undergraduate or graduate students that apply. To be eligible for the student prize, a student must be listed as the lead applicant on the application. So to select the winning retrofit designs, uh, as I mentioned, Mass CC will work with an external selection committee and the designs will be based on the following criteria. Each design will be rated out of 100 points. First, we'll look at the replicability and scalability in design. In this category, we'll be looking at whether the designs can be scaled to other triple deckers around the area, and if the designs are using commercially available materials. We'll also look at the minimized upfront construction cost. In this category, we'll look at um, whether the construction costs are as low as possible and whether the cost estimates that the applicants have provided are reasonable. Next, we'll look at the minimized 30-year energy operating costs. We'll evaluate what the 30-year energy cost of the building is based on the applicant's design inputs. I wanna note here that applicants should think about the trade-off between the minimized upfront construction costs and the minimized 30-year energy operating costs. If applicants spend more upfront, then the energy operating costs over time will be lower. For example, if an applicant um, puts PV on a building, that's gonna be a higher upfront construction cost, but the energy operating costs over time will be much lower. Applicants should think about the trade-off between the upfront construction costs and the operating costs over the 30 years to decide what balance they want between the two. Next, we'll also look at the compartmentalization, sizing, and comfort of the design. We'll look to see if the HVAC equipment is appropriately distributed and sized, whether there's appropriate ventilation, and if any resiliency measures have been taken. We'll also look at the embodied carbon impact of the proposed building materials. To do this, applicants will email tripledeckerchallenge at masscec.com to receive the Excel tool that the Builders for Climate Action made for this competition. We'll also be looking at how applicants are reducing and reusing building materials. And finally, we'll look at the design excellence and aesthetics of the, des of the design. With this criteria, we'll be looking at how the design integrates into the existing neighborhood. More information on all of the selection criteria can be found in our invitation for proposals. I'm gonna turn it over to Bev, who's gonna talk about the application materials. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Beverly Craig. I work on low and moderate income programs at Mass EC. And uh, just to head off 
I already see a question in the questions. Um, we've referred to all electric and uh, minimizing carbon by 2050, uh, carbon emissions. When, we, when we're talking about an all electric building, we are talking about one that is uh, using electricity for heating and cooling. So for example, uh, air source heat pumps might be an example. Uh, so any submissions that for this entire competition do need to get, uh, for example, gas cooking out as well as hot gas for hot water out uh, or oil out. I'm going to be briefly touching on the application materials and we do understand sort of the devils in the details with all of these kinds of things. Um, we are hoping it's not overwhelming for you. Uh, I think, although it may at first glance look like a lot, it's actually, I think, very familiar to a lot of you when you uh, go through the details. So I'll specifically be talking about A through E. And attachment F is basically, if you're gonna bring your own triple decker, in order for us to evaluate what kind of energy savings would be there, you need to submit some materials to us to, for us to understand the baseline building. So basically similar to what we've done for the assessed buildings, having the as-built and sort of the energy inputs that you would need for HERS rating and energy modeling, we need you to submit that. So attachment A uh, is our basic application narrative form. So the first page of this is super simple, just basically who you are and who your team is and sort of what track you're, you're applying for. Um, then we have this sort of flexible five page narrative. Uh, it is a maximum of five pages, please don't submit more than that. And um, this is sort of where under those scoring criteria, if it's not obvious in a sort of a quantitative fashion from the other materials, that you'll have the opportunity to sort of explain yourself here. So for example, the vision and summary of your approach. So this is your opportunity to explain what it is you're trying to accomplish with this overall design. Uh, you'll see B here is replicability and scalability of design. So how, how could this be adopted by a lot of other of those property owners. There's probably 12,000 in the state and we wanna see something that is achievable for a lot of people. And this is your place to be able to explain that. Next slide. Attachment B is a spreadsheet. And this is the two scoring criteria that are relevant in this spreadsheet are the ones about upfront construction cost and your uh, reduction in energy operating costs over 30 years. So this does look intimidating. We understand that. If you look at the details, actually there's not that much that you're gonna really have to fill out. So most applicants are gonna be focused on this bright blue column, your proposed design. Uh, if you're choosing from a, the triple decker A or B that the as-builts are provided, those are summarized in the first two white columns. So for example, um, say you're gonna pick triple decker A as the one you're gonna design off of. You'll see the existing buildings HERS rating for the different three units, the air infiltration rate, the roof condition and sort of what it's made about, where the joist, the joist spacing, siding, windows, wall cavity, basement. So this is sort of the basic information um, that you need in addition to the as-builts to be able to fill in. If you are bringing your own building, then you're gonna also be filling out the light green, which is sort of your starting point of your building, and the light blue on the last column, which is sort of your, your or I'm, I'm sorry, you will be filling out just the, the green. The light blue is for those applicants who are gonna be adding additional space. Um, obviously, in an existing building retrofitting it, you're gonna have slight, you're gonna have different inputs to the energy performance and like say, for example, the R value of the walls in the existing building and the addition. So the light blue is for your addition information so that we can calculate that information and score it. Next slide. So this is a, a continuation of this sort of a design input tab. Um, if you're gonna be adding solar, you would be putting it in here, the details on your domestic hot water, your ventilation, your lighting, and your appliances. And this competition really is not about just appliance replacement to more efficient re uh, appliances. I think we all know how to do that well. Um, so actually our, the triple decker A and B that we've chosen, the existing appliances are fairly good uh, to very good. And our, the emphasis shouldn't be in 
uh, spending a lot of effort and time replacing those. Um, there may be instances, though, where the existing building is on oil or gas, where you are going to have to switch out uh, an appliance. For example, uh, a range that is gas right now would have to be switched to an electric or induction stove. Next slide. Attachment B, this is our cost, this is where you're going to be summarizing your estimated costs for what you're proposing to do to this building. Um, most general contractors are going to be very familiar with the categories in here. We, these blue um, others are for areas if we haven't anticipated everything correctly that you should fill out. We do want you to be including your overhead and profit for this because in terms of replicability, it's not just about the pure estimated cost, it's about what it will really cost to do this. Uh, so please include your general conditions and the overhead and profit. One very important line not to ignore is this relocation cost. If you're choosing the sample tri triple decker A or B, we are asking in this competition that you not anticipate relocating all the tenants for the entire time of the rehab. We are looking for proposals that can be done with tenants mostly in place. But still recognizing that, we do know that uh, say, for instance, you're going to tear off the entire roof and start new. That third floor tenant's going to need to be re relocated for some period of time. And so part of the cost that you will be bearing would be that relocation cost. We are asking that for each unit, each day you assume $100 per day. People who are bringing their own building, we recognize some might be in an instance where somebody's bought a building and is going to condoize or do major improvements to the entire building. And so that track, if you are building your own or you're bringing your own building, it is acceptable to relocate the tenants for the entire time, but you will have lost rent for that entire time. So you do need to fill in this relocation cost area for that as well. Next slide, please. So attachment C, this, this we actually are asking you to email us if you're interested in applying so that we can get you this calculator. Uh, Builders for Climate Action has put together what we consider to be a fairly simple tool for helping to guide your decisions about what building materials you might use in the rehab or possible addition. So the bigger context for this, I'm not sure if everybody on the call is sort of familiar with the idea of the embodied carbon of building materials, but if we say each of these buildings were able to reduce the energy use by 60%, that is fantastic for 30 years. That is what we need to do for climate for 30 years. But if we use the wrong materials, materials that use that have very high global warming potential or are very uh, carbon intensive in how they are made and transported, it may be that we are actually taking so many years of that 60% operating cost to work off that initial carbon for the material that it's not worth it and so we need to as a society start be thinking about the trade-offs between the materials that we are proposing and the good news is is some materials actually sequester carbon so that is fantastic if you can incorporate those and those are going to have a lower uh, emissions calculation in this tool uh, some are very, very high global warming potential. I think uh, an obvious one is certain foams that use uh, blowing agents with very high global warming potential. And so this tool is basically, it's just sort of an add-on to what you're doing. Uh, it is, when you uh, email us to get this tool, we will send you the instructions and a short video on how to use it. We also are able to give you some technical assistance around this if you find anything in here difficult. Um, you'll see along the bottom uh, that there's the roofing, ceiling, exterior walls, windows, foundation walls, and there's a tab for the addition. You would just be filling in basically things you are planning to use, and it will automatically calculate for you on this front page sort of the embodied carbon of the materials you're planning to use. Um, so we need you to fill this out and send this to, to us as part of your application material. We do ask that um, if you're going to want any technical assistance or think you might need it, that you try and email us before September 1st uh, so that we can have enough time to incorporate any questions and technical assistance you might need. This tool also is using, to simplify things for people, an average across a category. So for example, within roofing materials, metal roofing would be a much higher average than say uh, rubber roofing or um, 
uh, shingles. There, if you are going to show that you're using that, it is going to be using the average for that category. If you're going to get really aggressive and find a really low embodied carbon material within that class that is much different than the average, so for example, say you're going to use recycled um, uh, shingles for your roofing material, that would be much lower uh, embodied carbon, and it wouldn't be characteristic of what the average is. If you want to override what that average is, it is possible for you, you to email us the environmental product declaration. So that is like the sort of life cycle analysis of the carbon involved in that, that building material to us, and we can customize that. Again, we really ask that you try and get those kinds of requests to us before September 1st. Next slide. Finally, the probably the one you guys are most familiar with here is a digital poster design. I, I suspect a lot of at least the architects on the call have put together one of these in the past. Um, this is very similar to what you would have seen in other design competitions. Uh, this time, though, we're asking for it in digital form because of COVID uh, and also for our uh, people's choice. We're going to have that definitely be a digital uh, voting process. So we want to have a digital version of this poster design. We're asking for a 24 by 36 landscape orientation and PDF format. And um, this digital poster should be able to communicate to sort of a lay person what it is you're trying to do here. Um, the content may be in text, diagrams, photos, or other, other graphic formatting. And we as MassCEC are going to produce two physical versions uh, for finalists in this. Um, we're not exactly sure how many, how many applicants we're going to get, but definitely finalists we will do this. Um, the, the first physical poster will be something that we will keep and be displaying at, throughout the uh, Commonwealth over the next several years. So we're hoping that that will help uh, bring some uh, visibility to your ideas. And the, uh, the second would be for you to keep so that you have this as sort of a benefit of applying. Uh, we are going to be using Built Environment Plus's uh, specifications around more sustainable product design than the normal foam uh, posters, so that's also a nice advantage. Uh, we will be widely circulating these vir these virtual uh, poster designs uh, for the People's Choice voting after the after the submissions uh, November sixth. Next slide, please. I'm going to hand this over to Jacqueline now, who's going to describe. Uh, how to, to possibly pair up um, or, or generate ideas on our Slack channel. Great, thanks Bev. Um, so through the competition, applicants can work with other individuals or organizations to create their retrofit design proposal. And in order to help facilitate this collaboration, MassCEC has set up a Slack channel where applicants can meet other potential applicants. So if you go to the webpage that's listed on the invitation for proposals, you'll see this page asking you to join the MassEC Slack page. Um, so once you enter your email, you will then be brought to this page asking to confirm your email address. So if you go and confirm your email, you then will be able to join the MassEC Slack page. Slack will ask you to put in your full name, and create a password for your Slack account. This helps so that when you go back to that initial link that you can find on the invitation for proposals, you can enter in your email and password and get back to the MassCEC Slack page. So once you put in your information, you will come to this landing page on Slack. MassCEC has created three different channels to help uh, with the communication through Slack. On the left, you can see that there's an announcements a mass CEC triple decker design challenge, and then a questions channel. So mass CEC will post any announcements in the announcements channel. So things like when the written questions have been posted or just reminders that the design submissions are uh, due in November. Then in the uh, triple decker design challenge channel, this is really for applicants to meet and uh, introduce themselves to other applicants. You can see that we have our first um, app, potential applicant has already posted on the Slack page. That's great. And we recommend uh, posting and introducing yourself, providing your email, 
maybe a little bit of information about what you want to do with the design competition. And then if you are interested in collaborating, you'll have other emails of potential applicants. Lastly, uh, the questions channel is for you to post any questions that you have about the invitation for proposals. We'll be posting the answers to the questions on the Mass CEC website, and you can also email them to us. So lastly, I'm just gonna go through a quick overview of the timeline for the competition. So if you have any questions after this webinar or ones that we weren't able to answer, uh, please email them to triple decker challenge at masscec.com by August 17th. This just gives us enough time to make sure that we can adequately answer your questions. MassCEC will post responses to the questions um, on the website by September 1st. And then uh, design submissions must be emailed to MassCEC by November 6th at 5 p.m. And we will be selecting the winning proposals by January 15th. Great. Well, thank you, everyone. Now, um, if anyone has any questions, we're happy to answer them. Thanks, everyone. Thanks to um, Bev and Jacqueline for walking us through that. And also want to acknowledge uh, Peter McPhee, who I failed to recognize earlier, um, our wonderful colleague Peter, who's been uh, somewhat lurking in the background, uh, checking out your questions and uh, doing his best to provide some initial answers. Um, so it, we do encourage you now, if you do have um, questions, to, to enter them into the, uh, the questions box, and we'll do our best, again, to answer them uh, in real time now. And if we're not able to provide answers, uh, we'll, we'll do so uh, before September 1st. And a couple of questions that have already come in um, are uh, about the recording. So yeah, we are, as we mentioned, recording this, and we'll be posting it to our website um, in the following days. So I should be able to find that off of our, our homepage. Um, and another question that was posed was, uh, what is an all electric triple decker? And I think we, we mostly covered that during the uh, presentation, but I think uh, hopefully you have a feeling for what a triple decker is if you haven't already. Um, and then all electric, essentially meaning that we're not um, allowing fossil fuels to be used in the design. So it's essentially all electric for purposes of heating, hot water, and cooking. Um, but again, if people need to submit questions, you can see on the right in the dashboard uh, under um, uh, what's called questions, you can type in a question there uh, and we can respond to it. But we have a couple uh, general questions also that uh, have come in um, based on the uh, uh, invitation for proposals um, that we can also cover briefly. Um, so one of those was, uh, so if I'm an architect, can I submit an application on my own? And um, essentially anybody can be submitting uh, an application independently. However, we are asking for um, a somewhat comprehensive of a proposal that incorporates realistic construction cost information. So I think there are cases where even as an architect, you may need to be reaching out to contractors or other parties for, for some of the information, uh, for example, like uh, construction costs. Another general question that we had was about um, eligibility for the student award. Um, so essentially when we've uh, created that category for the Students Award, we're, we're trying to encourage undergraduates or graduate students, um, you know, for example, from architecture, urban planning or engineering, but really from any, any walk of life uh, can apply for the Student Award. But to be eligible for that, the, the student has to be the primary or lead applicant on the applications. Uh, and I think we're, we did this uh, particular award because we recognize that students don't necessarily have the the experience or resources that professionals have, um, but we, we really want to encourage the creativity and innovation that we can see coming out of our, our colleges around this work. All right, another question that came in, um, what are the primary sources of electricity for the Metro Boston area? And so meaning the primary fuel sources. Um, so I think, uh, I'm not exactly sure what the question is here, but uh, in regard to what electricity um, comprised of in Metro Boston, but also perhaps what are the other fuels that are being used in buildings. Um, and I think uh, the way we're looking at it with regards to electricity is, you know, we have a blend of a lot of different generation sources in Massachusetts and New England, a portion of that's renewable. And I think the reason we're encouraging electrification in this design challenge is to 
to gain the benefits today of transitioning from electric from natural gas or oil, uh, which, which typically can deliver pretty significant greenhouse gas emission savings today, but also recognizing that in the coming decades that we'll have cleaner and cleaner electricity, which is a uh, requirement of, by law here in Massachusetts. And once that electricity becomes entirely clean, that if we have electric uh, heating and hot water end uses in buildings, that those will also be emissions free. So that's our goal there um, to get sort of uh, immediate reductions in emissions, but also longer term uh, zero emissions from these buildings. Yeah, I think some follow-ups uh, from Greg who submitted that question. Uh, yeah, we do get a portion of uh, our um, electricity from hydro in Canada and also from other renewable sources, both in Massachusetts and in other states as well. Um, another question uh, that we've had in general was, uh, for, for those that are interested in the uh, three plus retro retrofit design track, uh, understanding that this not might not necessarily be um, a pathway that can be that's clearly zoned in a certain municipality uh, or able to be permitted. You know, how does Mass CEC address this in a design proposal? So maybe I'll turn that over to uh, Bev or Galen if you want to talk about that. Sure. So um, yeah, one of our goals here is really to understand what would be getting in the way of a proposal like that, and um, we are fortunate a lot of communities are going through zoning rewrites right now. I have expressed interest in the potential for making an easier path for adding an, an addition in exchange for uh, energy retrofit of the entire building as a whole. So in some ways, this is to try and open the dialogue with various communities to make a path that might help for gentle density addition uh, while getting to our greenhouse gas goals. So there is a portion in the narrative five page where you can tease out what you find difficult about what you think would be a barrier or would be costly or time intensive. I mean, usually you can get a, at least a special permit in most places, but the process may not be easy or simple or inexpensive. So being able to sort of say what you think would be difficult about implementing yours so that we can bring that to communities uh, is one of the things we really hope to get out of this design competition. Uh, another question we've had was, um, is there an EUI target, so an energy use intensity target, um, and will projects be evaluated based on EUI? So I'll turn that over to uh, uh, perhaps Galen to start in that one, and then others can chime in. Sure. Thanks, Peter. So no, we don't have a specific EUI target. And I think part of, and Peter was beginning to get at this um, as he discussed the um, the carbon mix, if you will, or intensity of the grid, which is that the general assumption um, looking at um, the built environment and how we'll decarbonize it over the next 30 years um, and also, of course, build very high performing um, new buildings, new construction, um, is that we'll need to weatherize um, to some degree the vast majority of existing buildings while electrifying key uh, equipment, um, particularly HVAC and, and hot water. Um, and uh, and so in that sense, uh, that I think the challenge uh, for all of us, and particularly for those who are entering this competition, will be to strike a balance between the upfront investment in th those weatherization um, measures, uh, as as well as um, the uh, equipment, uh, and, uh, and strike a balance between that and looking at the impacts on the long term or roughly 30 year operational um, costs. So our hope is that by striking that balance and keeping uh, the kind of vision and what we hope will be a reality of a cleaner and cleaner lower carbon grid moving forward, um, that we don't necessarily need to call out an EUI target for the purposes of this competition. That we want, as, as Jacqueline noted, replicable scalable models. And of course, that also means uh, certainly from a design perspective, but also financially. We want this to make sense to building owners. Um, and if we're keeping our eye on uh, building electrification and balancing those upfront costs against long-term operational costs, we think we can achieve that without actually setting an EUI target. I don't know if anyone wants to add to that. So I will say we're 
by choosing this building type, we're starting with a very poor baseline. If you look at those numbers of those assessed A's and B's, uh, HERS rating is a somewhat imperfect uh, measure, but certainly the ones, the ones we put in for the typical ones were, I think, between 180 and 190 HERS rating. We certainly see regularly ones over 240 that have been assessed. So the starting point is very leaky, not very well insulated. And what that means is even though Jacqueline talk, mentioned deep energy retrofit, I, EUI target or deep like with a specific target is not really what we're going for here. It is uh, sort of what is replicable as Galen was saying. But I mean, we are lucky, I suspect it would not be very hard to cut in half. And I think usually deep energy retrofit means like 50 or 60% uh, reduction uh, of the EUI. And so I think inherently because of the building type we're choosing, um, it's gonna be fairly easy to get a very big reduction, but that may not, as a, an ultimate EUI, that may not be what anything near what we wanna see in a new construction building. Um, I will say, I do think it would, I know uh, there was some online buzz about Enerfit and whether this would be a good fit. And I, it would be very interesting to hear proposals about that. Um, again, cost is, I, I think, something that we need to be, you know, it's part of our judging criteria. It's, we can't get uh, the around, there's probably about 12,000 triple deckers statewide, is my guess. Um, we're not gonna get all of those buildings to do a very expensive fix and we need to come up with new ideas that are going to be achievable on a financial basis as well yeah i'll just i'll just add i think the um you know there's been uh you know there's always been a big focus on reducing energy use intensity in buildings and i think uh, we're, we're specifically targeting how do we get to zero carbon and i think the acknowledgement there is that you can still have certain amount of energy use, um, even modest, moderate energy use, and still be zero carbon if your electricity is, um, if everything's powered by electricity, but that the over one of the overriding drivers for reducing electricity is really just the cost of it. So I think by combining cost effectiveness and the goal of uh, being all electrified, you know, we kind of get to a um, where we're looking to go for a cost effective electric solution for buildings. Um, so another question that came in here. Um, so do the goals differ for owner-occupied units versus landlord-rented units? Um, that's a great question. I guess I'll turn that back over to the team to address that one. Uh, well, if I'm understanding the question correctly, I don't know if the goals necessarily differ. I think we want to see a high-performing building. Um, and, and all of the units be high-performing units, high-performing healthy units. Um, I suppose that there, it's, it's probably worth noting perhaps here that in some ways we're taking a page from a part of the brilliance of the triple-decker um, 100 years ago is that not only from a design perspective, but financially it provided an opportunity for um, uh, often immigrant families to buy a multifamily live in one of the units and, and rent out um, one or more of the other units um, to help pay the mortgage. And part of what we're conceiving here with the three plus track is uh, we've, we've leveraged in the past um, the, those, those rental units to pay for a mortgage. Um, can we actually leverage um, rental income from an additional unit to um, underwrite a portion uh, in many cases, a, perhaps a substantial portion of the cost of upgrading these buildings to meet um, 2050 um, climate standards, if you will. So um, I, I don't think that the goals differ so much if I'm understanding the question correctly, but perhaps others on the team are interpreting it differently. Yeah, I think it would be more both the A and B assessed would be uh, buildings that we did. It would be very typical for an owner to own the whole building and rent to two units. And part of our goal with making sure that relocation is incorporated into the cost and also not allowing the A and B to completely relocate for six months is anticipating that kind of ownership structure 
we are giving flexibility in the bring your own building. I think we recognize in some neighborhoods an investor is going in and building the whole thing, gutting the whole thing, and then condoizing the whole thing. Uh, and so we want to be open to participants who want to do that, but we also want to recognize that it's probably much more common for ownership to be very decentralized and for that, you know, these buildings have been handed down generation after generations in a lot of cases. And uh, we don't want to gentrify every uh, triple decker. That's not the intent here. Okay, we have another question here, um, which is, uh, are there any assumptions about the income status of the tenants in the triple decker for building A or B? This may have an impact on the eligibility for common mass aid programs and energy efficiency, renewable energy improvements. Um, so that's one part of the question. And the follow-up part of it is also, how are we to consider the cost of utility subsidized programs that apply a full progression of energy audit plus insulation plus heat pump water heater plus heat pumps plus solar plus energy storage? So maybe I'll turn that one over to Bev. Mm -hmm. Yeah, great question. And actually, one of the things we're hoping to do with this challenge is to make people more aware of the incentives that they could be tapping if they actually do go into a building like this. And um, there are, so we do not make assumptions about the income qualification. Uh, if two tenants were low income in a building like this, it would be eligible for the Mass Save Lean program, which is quite generous, but they do about 50 a year. Um, and they would pay 100% for all insulation measures, anything that they find cost effective, but they would not be probably replacing any of the mechanical systems. But the more, the one that, the two paths that we want to promote more for the general public, which would be regardless of income or whether you can get the paperwork to demonstrate the income are, um, so the, I think the one that's most relevant to most people uh, who will be submitting to this, uh, this uh, design competition will be the, uh, the Mass Save Renovations and Additions Program. So this program is an up to $10,000 incentive per unit. So it, it could uh, potentially be $30,000 for the whole building if you if you do propose things that have a very dramatic increase in um, the energy efficiency it is not re it, it's open to anything that will improve efficiency so replacement of windows with much better windows that does uh, change the incentive sum this incentive is calculated based on an initial ecotrope model of the building before any improvements and an ecotrope model afterwards that um, that shows the expected change based on the improvements that you're suggesting. So things that the regular Mass Save program does not uh, allow for, such as like uh, limited foam insulation, for example, spray foam, that could be included in the renovations and additions. We do go through an example retrofit situation in the invitation for proposals in the appendix. If you want to see sort of a, a scope, um, uh, an example of what I would call a medium retrofit. And in that case, for three units, I believe, uh, ooh, I need to look. Jacqueline, can you look it up? Actually, I don't want to say the wrong number. Um, by the way, if you do add an additional unit, the the maximum under that program would be $40,000. Uh, so it is a per unit basis, and it does uh, accommodate for additions, not just retrofits. The more sort of thing that you might be familiar with is the sort of more typical mass save incentive, which is uh, they come in and do a free assessment. They'll cover uh, well, right now they're covering 100%, but I think uh, in most multifamily buildings, they cover 90% of the cost of insulation. So, for example, cellulose in balloon-framed walls, they'll cover 100% of, or 90% of that on a usual basis. So, again, we have examples in the appendix of how that program works. But in that case, it's a mass save contractor coming in and doing the work as opposed to renovations and additions, your general contractor, that could just be an incentive towards the work that they're doing. Deb, what was and that? to get that 10,000 per unit, by the way, it's really important before demo that you do a blower door to 
demonstrate the air infiltration rate before, it's going to change dramatically with the rehab you're proposing. And a lot of that improved incentive amount is based on energy performance of the air infiltration rate changing. Bev, what was the number from the renovations and additions program that you wanted to clarify? What the incentive of the example was. So there's the table that shows the different paths. And then I think below it or above it, there's an example. This so is something example, we can... they would receive $20,000. $20,000. So this was sort of a moderate rehab of an existing three-decker, was under renovations and additions. It, it lists the different measures. Do you want to read those, Jacqueline? So they... They do a fill wall cavity with cellulose to an R24. Fill roof cavity with cellulose to R40, air seal and compartmentalize to reduce the ACH50 level from 23 to 7. They've replaced the windows with better double glazed windows. Add mineral wool to the basement ceiling to an R24. Use open cell foam on the rim joints to R20. Replace the heating and cooling equipment with individual heat pumps and replace the lighting with 100% LED. And with all of those measures, um, they reduce the HERS rating from approximately 180 to 62 for a $20,000 incentive. And, and Mike had a good follow-up question, which was uh, in looking at that, um, at the details in the appendix there, um, you know, this, this example <clears throat> presumes the walls are brought to R24. Uh, levels, um, but that that might not actually be possible in two by four walls that you might see uh, common in a triple decker. Um, I'm not exactly sure. Um, it, you know, I think what we're trying to do is here is have a sort of illustrative example of how an incentive would be calculated. Um, and I'm not not exactly sure if uh, you know if you could actually achieve R24 in a in a in most of these triple deckers or not. Um, I'm not sure, Bev, if you have a specific perspective on that, but it depends. <laughs> um, and I think uh, the other thing I will mention to applicants is we will have uh, people on our review panel, some experts, um, both on the cost estimation side and the energy performance side, so that we we really want realistic proposals. Uh, please don't lowball or overassume our value. Uh, we will have another pair of eyes of people who are m much more like first in the building science and the cost side of things than than the people on this call right now. So <laughs> another uh, general question we had was, how will the People's Choice Award be selected? Um, Jacqueline, do you have a answer for that? Sure. So um, we are planning to take the digital posters that applicants submit through their application and um, depending on kind of the stage of the pandemic at the time, we'll either have um, kind of a virtual event or an in-person event, event, and we'll be circulating the posters, and then the public will be able to vote on the People's Choice Award. So whoever receives the highest number of votes from the public will receive that award. And we are really hoping to use this as an opportunity to advertise the um, submissions that we receive through the Triple Decker Challenge and really get the word out about um, ways that we can do retrofits for triple deckers. All right, so I have one more question teed up. So uh, if you have any remaining questions, put them in there now or forever um, be silent about them, or at least until you email us. But um, so the final question I have here is, uh, will the winners be announced publicly? Um, and Galen, I was wondering if you could talk a little bit about that again. I know you mentioned it briefly in the presentation, but yeah, I think just echoing uh, Jacqueline's remarks just now, you know, we really do want to celebrate um, the design excellence um, in the region. And uh, so, um, yes, you know, we're, we're a publicly funded agency. Our, the, um, our awards um, are generally made public and uh, we'll certainly uh, look forward to, um, to recognizing um, the winners, um, both, both online, virtually, and, and ideally, hopefully, um, in, a, in a live event. 
Yeah, we're, we're looking into if there are those giant cardboard checks for prizes, but we'll have to wait to see how the COVID <laughs> thing plays out. But um, that's where we're Well, and I know for. like uh, Boston Society of Architects has expressed a lot of interest about, you know, showing the posters. I think a lot of sort of, we, we will actively be looking for visibility of both winners and just general applicants uh, because we want to share good ideas. Okay, so that's all uh, I have here for questions. Um, so I did see somebody was asking if we could get a copy of today's presentation slides. I think we can definitely post that on the Slack channel um, as as well as on our web page. So the again, if you just Google Mass CEC Triple Decker Design Challenge, there's a page that has the invitation for proposals that is laid out. All these application materials. Um, Everything's in one place, so feel free to go to there. Um, and again, we will be posting the answers to questions that were already highlighted today and any that get emailed to us there as well. Yep, and uh, there was a final question about how do we join the Slack channel? So yeah, that's uh, what I think if you, yeah, you mentioned that there are, um, I think it's it's pretty straightforward actually. And I think, you know, as we mentioned, it's a great collaboration opportunity for people to look for potential partners or just to share ideas um, and um, yeah you can find that uh, it's it's linked through a lot of our uh, website documents um, yes it's linked through the the invitation for proposals and we can also um, send that out um, with an email when we announce that we've posted the webinar as well great Thanks, everybody, for joining. Thank, Thank you. Take care. Time, Chris.